All right, Jack Posobiec here live, Human Events Daily, Washington, D.C. The lawfare is exploding across the nation. So from Washington, D.C., where we sit with the Supreme Court, we now go New York City. Mike Davis is up there to give us a quick update on the lawfare against President Trump. Mike, let me let me see if I have this correct. They had to excuse half of the potential jury pool, 50 percent of the jury pool. At least they were honest. So that means at least 50 percent were honest and said that they couldn't be fair regarding President Trump. But there's still another 50 percent where I'm not so sure how honest they are. What's going on? Yeah, we have this Manhattan jury pool, Jack. What? That's two million people and they voted 85 percent for Joe Biden. You have this Soros funded Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg who campaigned on getting Trump. You have this, uh, you have Matthew Colangelo getting deployed from the Biden Justice Department, a senior political appointee in the Biden Justice Department, the number three uh, in the Biden Justice Department. You have this Manhattan Democrat judge, uh, Juan Mershon, who donated to Biden in 2020 and another anti-Trump group. His adult daughter, Lauren Michon, is one of the Democrats' leading fundraisers. She's worked for Biden, Harris, Adam Schiff, other Democrats. She's raised over $100 million or around $100 million off this criminal trial over which her father is presiding. She has a financial stake in this criminal prosecution. This judge clearly should have recused even a former federal judge uh, appointed by bill clinton in new york came out on cnn on april 5th on caitlin collins's show and said that one mershon this biased democrat judge should have recused there's no chance that president trump is going to get a fair trial you can just expect that a stacked jury of uh, of left-wing operatives are going to find trump guilty of this non-crime of paying off a nuisance claim a bookkeeping misdemeanor at best, which I don't even think it's a misdemeanor, but it's a bookkeeping at, misdemeanor at best that's time barred. This allegedly happened like seven years ago. Uh, in 2017, they said that Trump changed the books and that was a bookkeeping misdemeanor that somehow he's trying to influence the 2016 election with what he did in 2017, which is just insane on its face. The prior Manhattan DA, Cy Vance, the Manhattan US attorney, the Federal Election Commission and Bragg himself declined to prosecute this bogus legal theory until Colangelo came from the Biden Justice Department and resurrected the zombie case, the first criminal indictment and trial ever against a former president. They waited 30 months to bring these charges and they timed this criminal trial to happen right now during the height of the presidential campaign in 2024. They want Trump in a courtroom instead of on the campaign trail. And this Democrat judge threatened Trump and said that if he was not in the courtroom, he could be sent to jail. Even implied that he's not gonna let Trump go to his son Barron's high school graduation. This is obvious Democrat lawfare and election interference. And frankly, Jack, as we've discussed, this is a criminal conspiracy under our federal, uh, federal criminal laws to violate President Trump's civil rights. And when President Trump is back into the White House uh, on January 20th, 2025, the Trump 47 Justice Department must open a criminal probe on this very dangerous criminal conspiracy to violate Trump's civil rights and to interfere in the election. These are republic ending tactics by these Democrats. It's lawfare on many fronts. What, 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 uh, Mike Davis, what is the, uh, we're told that there was a motion from Bragg on three counts of contempt of court against President Trump. This is regarding the gag order. Can you walk us through how that works? And let's say the judge decides to grant it, uh, what would come next? So the this Alvin Bragg and Matthew Colangelo, these Democrat operatives, went to this Democrat judge, Juan Mershon, this anti-Trump, pro-Biden judge, and they put this illegal, unconstitutional gag order on Trump as a criminal defendant, saying that he can't essentially speak out about the witnesses, about Matthew Colangelo, about Lauren Mershon's financial stake in this criminal prosecution, and this judge's clear bias, or at least the appearance of bias that requires his recusal according to this Clinton judge. And so they put this unconstitutional gag order on Trump and now they're threatening to hold Trump in contempt for violating this gag order, for retruthing a video that was critical or that pointed out 
these facts that Trump's not allowed to to speak out about when this is just clearly unconstitutional. You put a gag order in a criminal case to protect the criminal defendants, not to muzzle the criminal defendant. If anyone must have the constitutional right to speak out about against the judge, the prosecutor, the witnesses, the staff, their biases, their motives, the process, it is a criminal defendant going through a criminal process. It is truly third world Marxist hellhole tactics to put a gag order on a criminal defendant. If, if the criminal defendant is threatening the judge or threatening the witnesses, you can charge them with obstruction of justice or witness tampering. You don't put a vague and overbroad gag order on him, which is a prior restraint on his first, sixth, and 14th Amendment rights. This is clearly unconstitutional. So then walk me through the the is this a fine or could this potentially be and i asked you this question yesterday um we've all seen in the movies you know uh my cousin Vinny, he gets he gets thrown on the bus when he's held in contempt because he doesn't wear the right you know the right suit when he's told to uh is this something where judge marshawn could actually hold president trump in contempt and make him spend a night in jail behind bars like you said yesterday there's there's no doubt in my mind that the goal of this Soros funded Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg, this former senior Justice Department political appointee Matthew Colangelo, and this Democrat Manhattan judge Juan Marchand, their goal is to put President Trump in prison. And they will put him in jail for contempt. They will put him in jail if he doesn't show up to court one day. They'll put him in jail if he goes to his son Barron's high school graduation. And at the end of this bogus trial for these non-crimes, these non-felonies, they're absolutely going to try to put President Trump in prison. They're already threatening to put him in jail if he doesn't show up every day for the next six weeks, eight weeks, however long it takes to finish this trial to keep President Trump off the campaign trail. And that that's, I mean, that's stunning. The idea that a truth social post in the middle of a trial could actually put someone behind bars <laughs> while, and I have to jump back every once in a while and say this, while he's not just on trial, he's also running for president of the United States. And last I checked, the Real Clear Politics average has him at number one. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is truly stunning and outrageous that, that this is happening in the United States of America. These Democrat prosecutors, these Democrat judges, these Democrat witnesses, these Democrat operatives, they they are destroying our legal system to get Trump. We're not going to be able to come back from this. this. These are republic ending tactics by these Democrat operatives. Remember, this is how the Roman Republic fell. It was the lawfare by the Roman insiders against Caesar that caused him to cross the Rubicon from Gaul into Rome, and it led to the fall of the Roman Republic. And I'm not saying we're going into a civil war in America, but what I'm saying is, is this is this is going to lead for a to a legal tit for tat between the parties and destroy our country. Does anyone really think that Trump's going to turn the other cheek when he gets back into the White House? Hell no, and he shouldn't. Uh, no, he shouldn't. In fact, I've argued, and we've got the book on humans coming out soon, where the, the way out of lawfare specifically, the way out of all of this, but also lawfare specifically, is reciprocity. An older code of justice that we used to call Lex Talanus. That means an eye for an eye. Hammurabi understood this 5,000 years ago, and it was simple, right? That which is done to us must be done to them. And in fact, the eye for the eye is the basis for all civilization because this keeps everyone in check. So if one side has gone completely out of whack, then the other side is incumbent, is forced to, is duty bound to come in and bring some of the pressure back, else all of society is going to be completely upended. And every time, every time Viceroy Davis uh, uh, has a comment about this, Media Matters blows a gasket. Uh, last comment, we got a quick break. I would say you're 100% right. Uh, and it's, I call it the dead chicken strategy. And, and guess what? Yes. You, you have, you have to use the legal system to go after this criminal conspiracy to violate Trump's civil rights and to interfere in the election. If you don't do it, this will never end. As you said very correctly, Jack, in order to stop these Republic ending tactics, you need to give these leftists a healthy dose of their own medicine. All right.
Monterey, folks. We'll be right back here. Human Event Sailing continues. We all like hate the military. We hate America. Oh, 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 my this country is an embarrassment. Things I hate about America, the patriotism. This is a failed state. We are the United States of America. A continental superpower that the average schmo could get a break. I still believe in the republic and the goodness of this country. America is the greatest country in the world. The beauty of the Declaration and the Constitution and the Federalist Papers. We help everyone in this world. I live in a pretty great country. Freedoms to raise our family and practice our religion. We are better together. God save the Republic. God save the Republic. The United States is the envy of the world. God bless Rav and God bless America. This is Giselle Chaffin. I'm from North Carolina. I'd like to let you know that RAV News is the best news. Number one news, truth seeker. Seek to find the truth. It'll set you free. My name is Kyle. I'm with Real America's Voice because we can chat with each other, the host, even management. We are the RAV family, and we're better together. Hi, this is Becky from the Florida Panhandle, and I love watching Real America's Voice for the programming, the hosts, and my Rad Chat family. Hi, this is Kelly Renee from Northern California Hills, MAGA Country. The reason I watch Real America's Voice is for the faith, the family, and the freedom. Giddy up! Far. But I got a hankering, yearning deep inside For this book called Unhumans I just can't hide All right, Jeff, so we're back live. Human Vance we're on with Mike Davis. Mike, I got to ask you also oral arguments at uh, Double Duty, man. Uh, you you got to pull it, but hey, man, that's the card you pulled. Uh, you chose this life, right? Uh, <laughs> I didn't choose the streets. The streets chose me. That's what Mike Davis says every morning when he looks in the mirror. Um, the Supreme Court oral arguments. Um, so we have this uh, Elizabeth Prelgar who goes up and is arguing before the uh, before the Supreme Court regarding this 1512C2 and says, and is trying to give some argument to Gorsuch and says, well, you know, why? And because he has the rightfully asked the question, why wouldn't this apply to Antifa at the federal courthouse? Why wouldn't it apply to Kavanaugh protesters? Why wouldn't it apply to the protesters blocking the uh, the Golden Gate Bridge? What was your take on her performance today? It was embarrassing. I mean, she is a Democrat operative. She clerked for for then Judge uh, Garland on the D.C. Circuit. She didn't she work for the Mueller probe? I mean, she's she's a political operative in the SG's office, uh, and that's unfortunate. You want people in that job who are very credible with the Supreme Court. If you listen to her response to Justice Gorsuch, my former boss's line of questioning, she was talking over him. She couldn't answer his questions clearly. She sounded political. And she proved the point of these January 6th defendants, that this law that the Biden Justice Department from a post Enron statute on obstruction basically for shredding documents, the Biden Justice Department has took that vague and overbroad criminal statute and politicized it and weaponized it against Trump and Trump's January 6th supporters. And then she danced around on whether she, she, would, she, she could use that statute or the government could use that statute against BLM and Antifa and left wing activists. So the, the, the government, the Biden Justice Department, essentially told the Supreme Court today its clear position that if the Biden Justice Department disagrees with the viewpoints of the criminal defendants, they can use this vague and overbroad obstruction statutes to go after them. And if the Biden Justice Department agrees with the criminal defendant, they won't. It's that simple. 
And that's and and I I went through and kind of chapter it out in the beginning of the show here today explained how this 1512C2 and really all of 1512 and a lot of Sarbanes-Oxley, this Enron investigation that we're talking about, was the fact that the matter was, that was all run by Andrew Weissman and the Weissman clique as well. So this is something that goes back over 20 years. Vanderbilt Law, I just found very quickly, had uh, journals that were slamming this thing as overbroad 20 years ago and calling this out. These are not partisan uh, in any way, but basically what the, it seems like that this 1512 did, and it's something that clearly Weissman was hanging his hat on because half of the Mueller report, for folks who want to go back and read in humanevents.com, we have a fantastic piece on it. Half of the Mueller report was about 1512C2. They put it there on purpose because they knew it was overbroad so that they could use it to go after political opponents or just anyone they wanted. That's why you see the Weissman click over and over and over again. That's my that's my look on it. What do you think? I agree with you. And I'll tell you what, Julie Kelly deserves so much credit for exposing the, the, this corruption, this corruption of this federal criminal statute by these Biden prosecutors and these D.C. judges, D.C. judges appointed by both Democrat and Republican presidents. These They are despicable what they have done to these January 6th defendants where they know that they have politicized and weaponized our criminal justice system to go after these January 6th defendants. What happened on January 6th was a lawful protest permitted by the National Park Service that got out of control and devolved into a right. And there were three categories of people there that, that day. There were, there were people who were there peacefully, and even if you disagree with them, even if you hate them, they have a first amendment right to be there. There, there there were the people who trespassed who should have been charged with trespass and then there were people who were violent and they should be charged more severely but to lump them all together and call them insurrectionists even though they went unarmed into the nation's capital and then tried to throw the book at them try to put them in prison with this statute that you know up to 20 years in prison this is disgusting what they've done this is uh, this is un-american this is unacceptable what has happened to these january 6 defendants and i i'm hearing these federal judges and these prosecutors trying to to come up with ways to continue to punish these defendants at, even after they know the supreme court's going to reverse these convictions and come up with ways to keep them in prison as if the Supreme Court didn't reverse these 1512 convictions and come up with new ways to punish these defendants. Even going after Trump, they're saying that somehow, even though two of Jack Smith's four charges against Trump are based on 1512 to say that, oh, it, it doesn't matter if the Supreme Court reverses, we're going we're to still go after Trump. What the Supreme Court needs to do is just strike this whole damn statute because it's overbroad, it's vague, it's been politicized, it's been weaponized, uh, it's unconstitutional how it's been used against Trump and his supporters. And that's really where it comes down to, is that it's finally bitten off more than you can chew. And, you know, the guys over at Enron weren't exactly the most sympathetic. Uh, I think the country was able to go after them. But I've, but many people have pointed out that what was done to them and Arthur Anderson and some of the other individuals there was went far beyond the remit of law and simply just started destroying companies just for the heck of it. And there were lots of companies that were engaged in this type of activity that they didn't go after. And so what it was really about, I think, and it seems to me, it was about granting more power to the Department of Justice so that they could go on these witch hunts. And now it's gotten to the point where they've decided to use it on Donald Trump and his supporters because he represents a threat to them. Yeah, and it's Andrew Weissman, who's the biggest scumbag uh, in the Department of Justice, probably in the Department of Justice's history, who's who, who drove a lot of this stuff. He was on that Enron task force. And I, I would say this, look, you can't go after Trump supporters on January 6th and then turn right around and let the much more dead, deadly, the much more dangerous, the much more destructive BLM and Antifa rioters, rioters out of, of prison, give them amnesty. These Hamas supporters who are terrorizing Jewish Americans all across America, you can't have a politicized and weaponized justice system. You can't use a criminal statute, a vague and overbroad criminal statute to go after your political enemies and then coddle your political friends. That is how our country will fail. And that is unacceptable. And the Supreme Court should smack them down very forcefully. Amen. Everyone, you must go follow Mike Davis. Support the Article 3 Project. Hardest working lawyer on Capitol 
ill. Ladies and gentlemen, lawfare is the name of the day. <laughs>